Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. I hope you enjoy, so let's get started. So I have this light here. It's more of an adapter that you can put in any socket. And I just put it on this hanging light. And I want to put it in the corner over here. There's no light over here. And I have this strand of bulbs that doesn't have power either. So I want to hang it here in the corner. And then we can have some type of light over here. I think that would be a decent idea. There's the corner. Well, I, it found a friend, as you can see. And the one doesn't have a bulb. So we'll get a bulb. And uh, even we even got the uh, blue lights working. Those have been up for quite some time but they've never been able to be plugged in. The other thing that came to my mind is, I don't need these carpet strip things up here. Um, if I get rid of all that stuff up there, we have an opportunity for up lighting. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Even better with the track lights off. Love the different colors. Picked up this fixture quite a while back at the second use building material place. This is a fluorescent fixture, believe it or not. Kind of one that you could put above your sink or in your bathroom or something or another recessed into the ceiling. It has a chrome surround, as you can see, and a glass bowl lens. The reason I say bowl is, as you can see, it dips out. It's not a total flat glass piece. It is indeed curved. And, of course, we have our two F20 T12 fluorescent bulbs in here. Now, this doesn't appear to be, um, you know, something that was sitting around for quite some time. It obviously was in use as of recent because it does have some newer bulbs in here and some newer starters. And it just doesn't seem to have really old ballasts. But we do still have ceramic sockets and some wires that are still cloth. So I'm not sure really what's going on here. Because we do have some crimp connectors here too. So let's open it up. You might see something hiding down here in the corner. Here's one of the bulbs. A brand new starter in a box. So that's handy. I'm sure there was two in there. Uh, yeah, it has been opened. Okay, and then of course we have our other bulb. That just comes right on out. And here's the inside. So we have our starter socket. It's built into the lamp holder socket, which is really cool. And same thing here on the other end. Now you can see here, this socket's cracked and starting to fall off. Um, but we're just going to let it be the way it is because I am not going to ever find another socket like this. But as you can also see from the heat of the bulbs, this starter is degrading. So let's see if we can even get it out of here. Yeah, just the heat of it is... The UV and whatnot has been chewing away at the plastic. So here we can see, I guess that the ballasts do have cloth wiring, even though they're more of a modern casing. Ooh, look at that wire there. Definitely, definitely good that we're looking at this. As you can see, that wire there is definitely losing its insulation. Um... I'm sure the same thing is going on with some of these other ones. So we're going to have to keep track here. Yeah, see, it's, it's losing it right there. That's not good. So this is definitely going to need some help before it can be put into use. And I'm just going to put it up in the garage out here. I thought it was too cool of a fixture to just let sit there and have someone convert to LED when it could definitely be much cooler as, uh, you know, preheat fluorescent. So these crimp connectors that I'm seeing here looks like it was more of a modern thing because that must have been where the power came in, obviously. And these look like wall, you know, standard, you know, uh, <clears throat> 14 gauge wire or something like that. Yeah, this wire is just falling apart. Look at this. No matter where you bend it, it breaks and falls apart. So we're going to have to see if we can salvage these ballasts at all. We might not be able to. But we'll see what we can get out of this thing. I definitely would like to get it up and, and functional. So there's our first look. This is why you always inspect old fixtures with old cloth wiring like this. Some of it does hold up over time, but look at this. Just I'm just touching it, and it is coming apart. You know, just give it a, just the slightest touch there, and this literally is falling out of my hand. So I don't know if we'll be able to save these ballasts or not. We'll have to see if I can open this up somehow and see where the wires go and maybe solder some new ones on. But yeah, this is this is crazy. Look at this. You just give it a little bit of any movement and it is just degrading. And before it potentially fades away into non-existence, this looks like it's a Harmony House fixture. Also noticed 
that these little stands are here. So there definitely was some type of reflector assembly or some cover for everything underneath at some point. So I took this ballast apart and unfortunately I think it's just too far gone. Underneath, all the different layers are starting to fall apart and the wires are starting to touch the shell here, which will be a grounding nightmare because how do you prevent that from happening when you can't really unwind this or delaminate it easy enough to re, you know, reuse any of that. So I think these things are a total lost cause, unfortunately. But we'll take a look here. These are universal ballasts. It looks like 15, what does it say? 14, 15, 20 watt ballast. Indeed, that's what we got there. So I don't know. The fate of this fixture is now in, I'm not really sure hands. We'll figure it out. Unfortunately, I think we're just going to use the parts off of it and keep, uh, well, that. The sockets, one of them is cracked, as you can see there, but it's not the end of the world. It can be glued back together. It's still structurally sound, other than that little chunk coming out of there. And the other one is perfectly fine. It's just dirty. So, of course, the wires are a little old and crispy, but they're not totally falling apart like the other ones were. I don't see these sockets too often, so I guess that's a little bit worth it. Of course, we got some bulbs out of the deal and some starters. And I am going to keep this glass cover because it's pretty cool and you never know. Maybe there'll be a project for it someday in the future. But I think for this fixture, because of those ballasts, it's just going to have to unfortunately be done. On to the next fixture. This one is the F32T8 electronically ballasted Lithonia here. This was right above our heads until about last week when I took it down to put up this thing with the yellow tube covers on it. And I have some big plans for this fixture. I have a very unique ballast that I think will go pretty cool inside of it, as long as we can fit a T12 bulb in these sockets. I think we can. We'll give it a try first. And uh, of course, let's take a look on the inside here. Just give that a turn and we can take the cover off. And here's our current ballast. It's a Sylvania quick tronic turn the camera around here so you can see it and that's what we're going to be taking out and this is what we're going to be putting in this big robertson transformer now this one is unique for one reason there's different light levels if you can see here high medium and low this has a very unique switch on it that does that this fixture came, or this ballast I should say, came out of a fixture that was for an office cubicle. And of course you could change the different brightnesses of the bulb. but used a F30 T12 fluorescent tube at the time. And now it's going to go into this four foot fixture and be used with an F40 T12, which it does show in here. You can even use the energy saving lamps. It's high power factor. So that is our new ballast for this fixture. This should be a really fun one to do. And of course, we'll have to find a home for this cool rotary switch, if I can talk. And of course, we'll keep our pull chain. There's no reason to get rid of it, but this is gonna be a unique fixture when it's all done. A T12 does not fit in the sockets. In fact, the only reason being this little clip here. If that wasn't there, this would fit. So I don't know if I can reuse these, if we can, we'll do that, but maybe I'll find a different way to clip this. So these sockets just are held in with some little clip friction going on here. So I bent that up to make it flat, and as you can see, we can put a hole in it. That hole lines up perfectly with our little screw here, so hopefully this will work. In fact, I wouldn't have been able to use these sockets anyway, as they're both sides connected. That's obviously not helpful for our rapid start situation. I'm surprised as can be, but it fits. Literally, look at that. It's basically touching it, but it fits. So, our little screws work. Just had to bend up the metal a little bit there to accommodate them. Other than that, it definitely fits. The ballast is slightly taller than the channel, ever so slightly, but as you can see, it fits too. So, now we just need to drill a hole for our switch and wire it up. We've got our hole drilled for the switch, and you may be wondering why there's a little hole right here, and that'd be because. There's a little tiny nub here, and that's so that the switch doesn't turn on you while you're using it. So, in theory, this is the first time me testing this, or test fitting it, it should fit right in there. And look at that, it certainly does, right in place, right as it should. There's our switch, nice. We got our old ballast. 
we got our new socket in place well new to the fixture and of course we got our wires coming on down here until we get to our three level light switch selector here all wired up to the ballast of course and then we work our way on down to our main connection our other new to this fixture socket and our pole chain is still present now i had to swap around these end plates because i needed the ballast to be closer to the plug and on the old ballast the wires were coming out this way to go to the main power but on this one it's on the other side so i had to flip them around that's why this doesn't fit so good anymore but we also have it grounded now because we need that for rapid start so we just have a, a wire here that is grounding the fixture that's all we really need so we're all good there let's go ahead and get our cover on and we'll actually give it a go okay let's go ahead and turn it on here we go so this is high i've already tested it just so that i could make sure it works so this is the high level this is a 34 watt energy saving bulb so we have high medium and low high medium low and even though it does disconnect the connection obviously it is a switch it does seem to take it a second to restart the lamp, especially on medium and especially on low. Compared to high here where it does it pretty instant, medium needs a little bit of help and so does low. Very interesting. Of course, it's kind of doing the striation, strobing, whatever right now because it's cold, but very unique fixture. The only sad part here is that because of this thing, I don't know if I can put a tube guard on it for color. Maybe we'll find another way to do it uh, without needing this thing here. As much as I love this golden yellow, I think it's a little bit bright here for the type of vibe I'm going for. And of course over here, we have our wonderful newly ballasted dimmable fixture with the three levels. Of course we have a dimmable fixture right there too with the purple cover on it. That one uses a actual dimmer knob, very unique ballast. Similar to this one, but it has a wide range of dimmability. So, what am I going to do? Well, I changed my mind yet again. Isn't that fun? So this fixture, it's going back and it's home right up top there. And I'm going to put the red tube here. The yellow one is going to go up there and I can dim it. So that'll be really cool. So that's what we're going to do. There we go. We got everything switched around. We have another red in place of the yellow here. And we got the yellow over there in the bench area. It's really bright on camera, but it's a nice dim beautiful kind of gold yellow and of course we have our two reds here now it's kind of hard to see but the Philips deluxe cool white here definitely gives off a much a much nicer red than this one it is red but it has a little bit more of a pink to it where this one is totally red and they have the same covers on them but it's definitely a lot dimmer than the bright yellow and this is awesome being on a dimmed fixture Again, it looks really bright on camera, but it is nice and dim here. Let's see if I can maybe adjust its exposure somehow to kind of simulate what I'm seeing. Come on, brighten up there a little bit. I don't know. I can't get it to be just right, but it's a nice dim yellow. Of course, we have the short one here on the ceiling. And uh, even with that, well, I don't know if you can kind of see the difference, but... This is definitely a little bit dimmer than, than that fixture up there. It's March 1st, 2025, and it's 60 degrees out here in the garage. It's beautiful. I don't even have a coat on. And, of course, now we're going to go back into the low, lower temperatures this week. But this is so beautiful. I wish I could have it more often. Was out and about, picked up some screws and things. And, of course, I had to stop by the thrift store, found this bag of red cfl bulbs very cool sunlight cfl bulbs these remind me very much of a particular cfl that i got many 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 years ago at bed bath and beyond they used them in their display lights and i forget maybe it was sunlight was also the brand um it, it was definitely a different brand and not something they sold in the store but it was the same design except it was white naturally um and these are all red so very cool obviously this has already been opened and somebody took one of the bulbs out but it's okay, I found the closest thing in another fixture, this weird LED thing. So I was like, you know what, someone took my bulb, 
So we're going to take this bulb out of this random lamp and put it in there because they bundled it originally to have six bulbs in here. We're getting our six bulbs for the $5. Okay, some other things I picked up um, earlier or last week or something. I don't know if I showed it already, but these flame bulbs here, if I showed this already, I apologize. I thought these are cool with the lady in the background there. And uh, these blue Phillips bulbs, these are neat. They're 60 watts. You turn them on, they're as bright as a 15 watt incandescent. Super efficient. I've never seen bulbs that are more efficient in my life. They have that really weird kind of thing going on where it looks like specks of salt are on it, like a pretzel. Um, but I picked up these and these bulbs and then some surface mount sockets like we used at the bottom of the stairs in the last project. I think all this stuff was about... I don't know what, uh, well, that was two. And, well, some of these things were on sale. I don't know. I think all together is about $6. Anyway, I'm going to take one of these out and see if I can use it in our light over here. Because why not? I mean, we got a beautiful vintage bulb in here right now. But if I can save that old Sylvania bulb, that'd be pretty cool. The other thing I forgot to show is after taking down this light from over here... I decided to put it up in this area where the shop light used to be. It used to be right here. The reason I had to move the shop light over is because of the street light. Well, there's enough space here for this fixture. So I put it back up with black light tubes in it. Of course, I did the zip tie thing again just to be safe. These bulbs are heavy. I don't want them to ever fall out from vibrations of being up above or whatnot. And uh, of course, it's giving that awesome black light effect. I'm really liking how this whole area is turning out. Really fun, cool vibe with it all. Naturally, it's a lot brighter than the 15 watt incandescent over there. And of course, it's not as deep red either. Of course, the camera makes it kind of look like that. But uh, very cool bulb, just not what I'm looking for in the corner over there. And here's the color change thing, nothing special. It does have a infrared receiver inside. So obviously this came with a remote at some point in its life and now it just does random color changes. But it's an interesting bulb because this is what early LED bulbs look like, especially novelty ones. It was just a very simple put together thing. You know, this cover unscrews, this base unscrews, it all unscrews. And it's just a really early example of, of this kind of stuff. Well, apparently it doesn't like running in reverse. So let's put it in the right way. And even though we're here under the yellow light, here's a blue bulb for you. 60 watt I guess it's kind of bright in person, but uh, it's not as, as um, there you go. That's probably more what it looks like. Yeah, 60 watts. Uh, it's producing more heat than anything else. There we go, camera. How about we focus some time today? Video of this weird thing coming too. Used to use these bulbs at work for an indicator that we don't have anymore. And I had them in the electrical drawer going through and getting rid of things we don't use. Thought I could use it here. So... These are some, I believe, Dammer, D-A-M-A-R, bulbs. They're longer life is literally all it says on the box, but they're solid red. I thought we bought 25 watt, but it looks like I bought 40 watt here, 130 volt. So they definitely have a longer life to them. And that's the bulb. It's kind of a mix between an A19 and a short neck A19. It looks a little shorter than you'd expect, but it could be an A19. Literally just a long life, 130 volt. The base on that one's a little bit slanted. Yeah, they're pretty much both the same slanted deal. Either way, I thought that I could try one of these out in the light all the way over there in place of that 15 watt one. But it'll probably be too bright, but we'll try it anyway. Well, believe it or not, it's not that much brighter than the 15 watt. It's pretty on par with it. Probably a 25 watt equivalent. I mean, it's 40 watts on 120 volt being a 130 volt bulb. So it's a little dimmer than our original friend here. And of course, a little bigger. But I think it still looks good. Then I can at least save this vintage A15. I really do hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Leave a like down below and a comment. I do enjoy reading all of your comments. Of course, check out the other videos here on this screen. And until next time, thank you very much for watching.